Legendary Passages, Episode 35, Medea in Corinth, the Corinthian Isthmus from Pausanias' Description of Greece. This time we shall review various landmarks around the city of Corinth and examine the stories and myths concerning them. The gods Helios and Poseidon, Queen Leucothea and her son Eupoliamon, Kings Neleus and Sisyphus, the usual temples and statues, and finally Jason and Medea and their children. Medea in Corinth, a legendary passage from Basanius' Description of Greece, translated by W. H. S. Jones. The Corinthian Isthmus stretches on one hand to the sea at Sincrie, and on the other to the sea at Lachium. For this is what makes the region to the south mainland. He who tried to make the Peloponnesus an island gave up before digging through the Isthmus. Where they began to dig is still to be seen, but into the rock they did not advance at all. So it still is mainland, as its nature is to be. Alexander, the son of Philip, wished to dig through the Mimas, and his attempt to do this was his only unsuccessful project. The Sinidians began to dig their way through their isthmus, but the Pythian priestess stopped them. So difficult it is for man to alter by violence what heaven has made. The legend of the Corinthians about their land is not peculiar to them, for I believe that the Athenians were the first to relate a similar story to glorify Attica. The Corinthians say that Poseidon had a dispute with Helios about the land, and that Briareus arbitrated between them, assigning to Poseidon the isthmus and the parts adjoining, and giving to Helios the height above the city. Ever since, they say, the isthmus has belonged to Poseidon. Worth seeing here are a theater and a white marble race course. Within the sanctuary of the god stand on one side portrait statues of athletes who have won victories at the Isthmian Games. On the other side, pine trees growing in a row, the greater number of them rising up straight. On the temple, which is not very large, stand bronze tritons. In the fore temple are images, two of Poseidon, a third of Amphitrite, and a sea which is also a bronze. The offerings inside were dedicated in our time by Herorides the Athenian, four horses, gilded except for the hooves, which are of ivory, and two gold tritons beside the horses, with the parts below the waist of ivory. On the car stand Amphitrite and Poseidon, and there is the boy Peleamon, upright on a dolphin. These two are made of ivory and gold. On the middle of the base on which the car has been wrought, a sea holding up the young Aphrodite, and on either side are the nymphs called Nereids. I know that there are altars to these in other parts of Greece, and that some Greeks have even dedicated to them precincts by shores, where honors are also paid to Achilles. In Gabala is a holy sanctuary of Dodo, where there was still remaining the robe, which the Greeks say that Eriphyle was bribed to wrong her son Alcmaeon. Among the reliefs on the base of the statue of Poseidon are the sons of Tyndareus, because these two are saviors of ships and of seafaring men. The other offerings are images of calm and of sea, a horse like a whale from the breast onward, Eno and Bellerophontes, and the horse Pegasus. Within the enclosure is on the left a temple of Peleamon, with images in it of Poseidon, Leucothea, and Peleamon himself. There is also what is called his Holy of Holies, and an underground ascent to it, where they say that Peleamon is concealed. Whosoever, whether Corinthian or stranger, swears falsely here, can by no means escape from his oath. There is also an ancient sanctuary called the Altar of the Cyclops, and they sacrifice to the Cyclops upon it. The graves of Sisyphus and of Neleus, where they say that Neleus came to Corinth, died of disease and was buried near the Isthmus. I do not think that anyone would look for after reading Eumelus. For he says that not even to Nestor did Sisyphus show the tomb of Neleus, because it must be kept unknown to everyone alike, and that Sisyphus is indeed buried on the Isthmus, but that few Corinthians, even those of his own day, knew where the grave was. The Isthmian games were not interrupted even when Corinth had been laid waste by Mummius, but so long as it lay deserted, the celebration of the games was entrusted to the Sicyonians, 
and when it was rebuilt, the honor was restored to the present inhabitants. The names of the Corinthian harbors were given them by Leches and Citrius, said to be the children of Poseidon and Pyrene, the daughter of Achilles. Though in the poem, called the great Yeo Pyrene, is said to be a daughter of Obelus. In Lachium are a sanctuary and a bronze image of Poseidon, and on the road leading from the Isthmus to Sincrie, a temple and an ancient wooden image of Artemis. In Sincrie are a temple and a stone statue of Aphrodite. After it, on the mole running into the sea, a bronze image of Poseidon, and at the other end of the harbor, sanctuaries of Asclepius and Isis. Right opposite Sincrea is Helen's Bath. It is a large stream of salt, tepid water flowing from a rock into the sea. As one goes up to Corinth, there are tombs, and by the gate is buried Diogenes of Sinope, whom the Greeks surname the dog. Before the city is a grove of cypress called Crinium. Here are a precinct of Bellerophontes, a temple of Aphrodite in Milanus, and the grove of Laius, upon which is set a lioness holding a ram in her forepaws. There is in Thessaly another tomb which claims to be that of Laius, for she went to that country also when she fell in love with Hippostratus. The story is that originally she was Hycara in Sicily. Taken captive while yet a girl by Messias and the Athenians, she was sold and brought to Corinth, where she surpassed in beauty the courtesans of her time, and so won the admiration of the Corinthians, but even now they claim Laius as their own. Things worthy of mention in the city include the extant remains of antiquity, but the greater number of them belonging to the period of its second ascendancy. On the marketplace, where most of the sanctuaries are, stand Artemis, named Ephesian, and wooden images of Dionysus, which are covered with gold, with the exception of their faces. These are ornamented with red paint. They are called Lysias and Bacchias, and I too give the story told about them. They say that Pentheus treated Dionysus despitefully, his crowning outrage being that he went to Citheron to spy upon the women, and climbing up a tree beheld what was done. When the women detected Pentheus, they immediately dragged him down, and joined in tearing him, living as he was, limb from limb. Afterwards, as the Corinthians say, the Pythian priestesses commanded them by an oracle to discover that tree and to worship it equally with the god. For this reason they have made these images from the tree. There is also a temple of fortune, with a standing image of Parian marble. Beside it is a sanctuary for all the gods. Hard by is built a fountain on which is a bronze Poseidon. Under the feet of Poseidon is a dolphin spouting water. There is also a bronze Apollo, surnamed Clarius, and a statue of Aphrodite, made by Hermogenes of Cythera. There are two bronze, standing images of Hermes, for one of which a temple has been made. The images of Zeus are also in the open. One had not a surname, another they called Sithonius, of the lower world, and the third most high. In the middle of the marketplace is a bronze Athena, on the pedestal of which are wrought in relief figures of the Muses. Above the marketplace is a temple of Octavia, the sister of Augustus, who was emperor of the Romans after Caesar, the founder of the modern Corinth. On leaving the marketplace along the road to Lycaeum, you come to a gateway, on which are two gilded chariots, one carrying Phaeton, the son of Helios, the other Helios himself. A little further away from the gateway, on the right, as you go in, is a bronze Heracles. After this is the entrance to the waters of the Perine. The legend about Perine is that she was a woman who became a spring because of her tears shed in lamentation for her son, Sincreus, who was unintentionally killed by Artemis. The spring is ornamented with white marble, and there have been made chambers like caves, out of which the water flows into the open air well. It is pleasant to drink. And they say that the Corinthian bronze, when red-hot, is tempered by this water, since bronze the Corinthians have not. Moreover, near the Perine, are an image in the sacred enclosure of Apollo, and the latter is a painting of the exploit of Odysseus against the suitors. Proceeding on the direct road to Lycaeum, we see a bronze image of a seated Hermes. Besides him stands a ram, for Hermes is the god who is thought most to care for and to increase flocks. As Homer puts it in the Iliad, Son was he of Phorbus, the dearest of Trojans to Hermes, 
rich in flocks, for the god vouchsafed him wealth in abundance. The stories told of the mysteries of the mother about Hermes and the ram I know, but do not relate. After the images of Hermes come Poseidon, Leucothea, and Peleamon on a dolphin. The Corinthians have baths in many parts of the city, some put up at the public charge, and one by the emperor Hadrian. The most famous of them is near the Poseidon. It was made by the Spartan Eurycles, who beautified it with various kinds of stone, especially the one quarried at Crocea and Laconia. On the left of the entrance stands a Poseidon, and after him Artemis hunting. Throughout the city are many wells, but the Corinthians have a copious supply of flowing water beside the water which the Emperor Hadrian brought from the lakes to Vallis. But the most noteworthy one is the one by the side of the image of Artemis. Over it is Belofontes, and the water flows through the hoof of the horse Pegasus. As you go along another road from the marketplace, which leads to Sicyon, you can see on the right of the road a temple and a bronze image of Apollo, and a little farther on a well called the Well of Glauci. Into this, they say, she threw herself in the belief that the water would be a cure for the drugs of Medea. Above this well has been built what is called the Odium, beside which is the tomb of Medea's children. Their names were murmurous and fairies, and they are said to have been stoned to death by the Corinthians, owing to the gifts which legend says they brought to Glauci. But as their death was violent and illegal, the young babies of the Corinthians were destroyed by them until, at the command of the oracle, yearly sacrifices were established in their honor, and a figure of terror was set up. This figure still exists, being the likeness of a woman frightful to look upon. But after Corinth was laid waste by the Romans, and the old Corinthians were wiped out, the new settlers broke the custom of offering those sacrifices to the sons of Adia, nor did their children cut their hair for them, or wear black clothes. On the occasion referred to, Medea went to Athens and married Aegeus, but subsequently she was detected plotting against Theseus, and fled from Athens also. Coming to the land then called Aria, she caused its inhabitants to be named after her, Medes. The son, whom she brought with her in her flight to the Ari, they say she had by Aegeus, and that his name was Medus. Callanicus, however, calls him Polyxenus, and says that his father was Jason. The Greeks have an epic poem called the Napactia. In this, Jason is represented as having removed his home from Iolcus to Porcyria, and Murmurus, the elder of his children, to have been killed by a lioness while hunting on the mainland opposite. Of fairies is recorded nothing. But Synetheon of Lacedaemon, another writer of pedigrees and verse, said that Jason's children by Medea were a son Medeus and a daughter Ariopis. He too, however, gives no further information about these children. Eumelus said that Helios gave the Aesopian land to Aeolus and Epilaria to Aetes. When Aetes was departing for Colchis, he entrusted his land to Bunus, the son of Hermes and Alcidamia. And when Bunus died, Epopius, the son of Aloeus, extended his kingdom to include the Ephraeans. Afterwards, when Corinthus, the son of Marathon, died childless, the Corinthians set for Medea from Iolcus and bestowed upon her the kingdom. Through her, Jason was king in Corinth, and Medea, as her children were born, carried each to the sanctuary of Hera and concealed them, doing so in the belief so they would be immortal. At last she learned that her hopes were in vain, and at the same time she was detected by Jason. When she begged for pardon, he refused it, and sailed away to Iolcus. For these reasons, Medea too departed and handed over the kingdom to Sisyphus.